Good day, people. This is the Awareness Messages Outreach Group coming at you to bring an update on the lifelong food planning. Um, I'm sorry, the lifelong meal planning um, weekly weight loss update. Um, I am bringing you this week. Normally, I've been doing those. Um, the lifelong meal planning um, on some of the live, um, some um, on the live on the live messages, um, but today I am doing it um, differently. Um, this is an update, and I thought that I showed you guys what the meal plan planner looked like um, that I was using. I told you you could buy it at Amazon or make up your own you really don't need to have it but it's just nice I picked one and um I'm using it I blew it up um I copied the pages or a page and just made copies of the pages duplicates and used them and um I have included my first 34 days for you um which I had not done before previously I did it this way and when you see it just go ahead and um, blow it up larger on your screen um, if you you know if you have any difficulty seeing it you shouldn't but there's you know things happen when you scan things in and so these are scanned copies of my actual meal planning and as you can see I wanted you to check it out um, this is the um, 34 days I told you and I came to y'all when God first told me to go ahead and share it with you so that you can do the same thing um, if you look at if you listen to and look review the um, other um, lifelong meal planning that I had talked to you about videos uh, in the other videos um, you will know that this is just regular food that you have in your house that you have on your grocery list um, and if you look at the videos you can see some of the food items that I shared with you that I was using you can probably find your own you know I mean not probably you can find your own um, I just made up the ones that I did because I've done this before and I shared with you also um, the 23 days to a brand new you it was a Daniel fast foundational um, weight loss plan that I done and I told you um, I done it the first time God gave me a meal planning um, I lost 60 pounds on that and so um, I gave it to my um, peers my colleagues at, in church uh, many of the ministers were in need of that type of plan and these are healthy unless you do something different you know to make it unhealthy there shouldn't be a problem with these plans now I know that um, um, the Asian gentleman um, Dr. Um, Fung F-U-N-G I believe his last name is has come out and talked to people on all social media uh, about the intermittent fasting and and telling you all these um, unsurprisingly truths about the medical profession if we if you are have if you have a brain in your head I'm serious now I'm not trying to talk down or be condescending but he's not telling us anything new you know for all of those who have been trying to lose weight who have had battles with weight loss and and um, um, illnesses or disabilities that has put extra weight <laughs> excuse me <clears throat> on your body and uh and, and or if you've been one who had it under control and then all of a sudden something happened in your life and you have not been able to win the battle of the bulge the weight and i was just listening to uh, i just want to share something with you real quick i was listening to um oh something on social media i can't even think of the name of it but you probably can find it um if you're looking at anything about weight loss or what but look under sugar videos um the issue with sugar they and I, I when i heard it i was like really mad i was talking to god i said god you know i knew that this was true all along but it's funny how um 
it's being uh, opened up to the public now that where the doctors are telling on themselves the scientists all of them are telling on themselves but they got a reason they got a method to their madness just like dr fung you know coming out from the profession and saying you know that he wants to do something help more helpful to people and you're going and pe some people are going to find some help from what he's putting out there okay but what i was trying to tell you is that the medical profession or anybody any of the big boys out there in society they're out there to for their own purposes it's not for us and it's a shame because they should not be allowed they're like predators on society and they're billionaires you know and they make money off of your misery and they've been doing it for eons okay and and nobody has come along with any kind of law or legislation to regulate the the medical uh field um in such a way that it truly does benefit people you have to take care of yourself with this you and god if you if you're a christian you can get god's help with this but i'm just saying you know god has given it to us to share with other people um, whether you saved or not saved whether you're a christian or not christian is what i'm saying and um because this is where i'm getting the information from god gives it to me okay and the thing is is that what i'm presenting this time um is one is a plan that well both plans my first plan like i told you was the 23 days to a brand new you um it didn't involve exercising either but i believe i did uh exercise eventually because i was an exercise person and i didn't have a reason at that time why i couldn't exercise so when i did the plan of course i did it um that way i added it in but at first i didn't because when you're doing something new you want to do one thing at a time you don't want to add a bunch of new things at one time if you want to be successful um it's best for you to take one phase of it at a time so this plan when i asked god for it i said okay god i'm at a place in my life now because this is years later i'm at a place in my life now where i can't exercise i got exercise restrictions on me from the medical pre doctors and stuff because of what has transpired in my body over the years um i have a condition a muscle disorder that's called rhabdomyolysis and I'm not claiming it. I'm just saying this is what has happened in my body. And they don't know if it was from um, the medicine Lipitor um, or from some other reason. I even have some genetic specialists uh, checking. They're doing a, a they've done a doing a genetic study on me because I don't know of anybody else in my family who's had this. But my sons are having similar symptoms that I have um have experienced but they're not at the stage where i am where i ended up in the hospital several times because of it so um i don't know if it was from my type of exercising um that i've done um because like i could walk from one town to the next that would be my exercise i love walking and so um i don't know if i could do that now today I don't think I can uh, number one you know because my health has changed and I've had some and that was due to a surgery I had I had a female surgery last year and ever since then I've been having like um, symptoms of tachycardia and I reported it and um, the nurse that I reported it to um, also believes that it was from my last surgery so when you're getting having surgery and it wasn't elective surgery it was um surgery that i had to have done well i mean yeah i had to have done yeah it was a female situation and um i had to have some things removed and so you know um i i have issues with anesthesia what type they use and things like that and i remember distinctly i'm sharing this with y'all it's a story but it's the truth so that you can kind of relate to how people get into situations that affect their health and affect their ability to take care of themselves you know if you're a person who I, i'm 
veteran. I'm a military vet. So I, I'm used to exercising and things like that and doing things and, you know, and, you know, pushing the limits. So I'm used to doing things like that. I'm not used to not being able to do whatever I feel like I can do or want to do. Um, so, you know, I, I, here I am now and I'm, I've got these restrictions going on. I have to really pay attention when I do go out and do my normal my day, I have, I love to, to work outside. I love to work in the yard. Um, I love the do it yourself project things. Um, that's how I am. I, you know, I'm on my third home and I pretty much have flipped this home myself with a little bit of help from where I'm a handyman and, um, any professional work that needed to be done. I had to hire or pay, you know, someone to do that part that I could not do. But for pretty much, like for example, I laid a gravel driveway all by myself at this home that I'm at now. This home was a, um, a Christian residential housing. When I first bought it, we had people living here in our program. Um, and so um, that program ended in 2017, I believe. 2016, I'm sorry. Um, and so we have been doing it since um, 2009. So... Um, you know, I, I do things, these are things that I'm used to being able to do, but now, you know, even when I tried to do it, I couldn't do it, you know, and, and so I have to face reality, you know, I'm older now, and I have to face reality, and, and I'm not saying that just because you're older, you have to stop doing stuff, but you do have to be sensible, and you do have to protect yourself, because you don't want to check out of here early on a humbug, you know, just because you did something that was too much for your body to handle okay um whether it was a medical issue that put you there or whether you put yourself there you know or whether you know age put you there for some reason uh i i, I don't like to put things on age because i don't think it's just age you know um there had to be something some prelude to that you know your condition so I'm just sharing with you what God told me to share with you so that you can take control. This is all about taking control over your own health, over your own weight loss plan. Stop paying people, you know, a bunch of money, you know, uh, like I said, Mini Craig and, and all these different types of programs out there that will happily charge you a monthly fee to ship foods to you you know that you didn't really pick you're not really picking it you're you're picking from their food if you do pick anything um but you know what i'm saying and you're having to pay for these meals you're having to pay for all this stuff and of course you know you can support my channel if you like um uh, you can send something to it if you want the other the 23 days to a brand new you 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 want that booklet laminated like i was telling you guys about you can have it uh, you know what I'm saying with a give, just give a donation because I have to make the things you know but other than that no I, I'm not trying to get rich off of you off of information that I'm sharing with you I consider you a brother or sister in the world and I'm trying to help I, I, I'm only on social media to help to share what God gives me to share with people so I have another topic area that I'm working on um, and it's out there but I also have this um, to offer to people and so um, what I did with this video is that I included every um, meal plan every meal that I planned for those 34 days that I was telling you about and where I lost the, uh, 18 pounds and like I told you in other previous videos that you can lose on this plan the way it's set up you will lose um, two to four sometimes five pounds every week but um, just look at the minimum if you just get losing two pounds every week that's a lot y'all especially if you and and it's manageable it t it's take a while because like I had went on a vacation because per se because um I had gotten I had gotten an infection yeah that's what it was I'm sorry and um and like I told you guys I shared with you guys when I don't feel good I eat 
you know it makes me feel better it helps me recover it gives me my strength you know back and everything to recover and of course I get the doctor care whatever medicine I, I may need and things of that nature so of course that's what I did and and then I get back to my regular routine you know and, and you go from there but during that time you know I was also when I got better I also had a lot of uh, work to do around my home and on the property and so I've been busy you know to the point where when I'm super busy like that I don't eat you know I'm, I'm I might be down to one meal a day and I used to have a big problem with that um, but when I'm not doing that I do eat better you know I eat you know I try to eat three meals a day the third one is usually a small meal you know there's usually a very small meal there um, and for the most part they're not if you once you see the menus that I use um, you'll see that I wasn't really eating that much what I need you to understand about what you're looking at in the meal planning these sheets that you see on there it's called I called it a journal I told you guys it's, it's a journal it's a food journal and the, the reason why I recommend you do it so you can keep track of what's going on so you can learn about yourself and learn from doing this plan and then it becomes something that that will be second nature to you after a while after you've been on doing this for a while because it's kind of fun as well because every week you'll get to to the end of the week and you'll go ahead and you'll ask you um, weigh yourself you need to weigh yourself of course okay you need to weigh yourself and uh, so you can see where you started and see what's happening after you start practicing you know some of the um, ideals that I'm presenting with it and um, these foods on here you do not have to follow them these are just I'm just showing you what I did I just made this up okay um, based on what I know about me what I like to eat things like that and so and, and plus what I know works because I, like I said this is not the first meal plan that I've come up with that was successful so um, the thing that doesn't and just because you might stop doing it for a while like say you get tired of doing it for a while and you've already achieved your goal and stuff you come off of it for a while you know and see how long it takes you to gain this amount of work, weight and stuff and so you can see where you need to jump in at you know and reapply it and then you just apply it as you need it as your life goes on that's why I said it's a lifelong meal planning um, strategy that you have and you're not having to pay somebody hundreds of dollars you know every month you know to to help you with your weight loss what for the rest of your life no I want control I want that power in my own hands and you should want the same thing for yourself okay and so that's what I'm talking to you about now back to the sugar issue I watched a program the other day and they were talking about the food in industry all the big boys got together they got called into a meeting because <clears throat> statistics show that the people people have gained so much weight there's so many people that have um, type 2 diabetes now used to be it had to be in your family in order for you to get type 2 diabetes now it's a social disease and it's a also a eating disease okay and it's really not an eating disease it's what the um, manufacturers of food items food products the big boys who make the food out there for us that we buy in our grocery stores are the ones who are the culprits and I knew that they had to be putting stuff in the food lots of people know that you know but but you didn't know what you didn't know where you didn't know how and so there wasn't really anything you could do about it and until they came clean with it you know until they had statistical proof um, there wasn't a lot that um, the government could say either so well they found out at first remember they used to tell us that cut back cut out your fats cut out your fats cut out your fats okay and we we also know and learned over the years that we needed some of that fat that some of that fat is good for us and we have to have it so that wasn't the answer as to why people were overweight and it, people weren't that overweight at the time but now almost everybody is overweight why I 
wonder how many people have asked themselves, why has this happened? Our children are overweight. It's just ridiculous. And so I knew that there was a sinister um, reasoning behind it all. And so I was, I, I, the Lord, I think the Lord just has me listen to things so that I can hear and so he can talk to me about it. Because he you know I've already asked him questions about it and things. So he revealed to me through this program that um, the manufacturers of our foods have been putting and it's funny because it kind of it's kind of funny but it's not funny but what came to my mind was is that when you were kids I don't know how many people's mothers did this but my mother was an excellent cook but I also know that many mothers put sugar in their children's foods a lot of times to get it to taste better to the children so they'll eat it okay even if it meant putting a little bit in like say you were trying to get your children to eat vegetables you could put it in there you know and kind of hide it so that they will want to eat it the flavor will be something that they want and therefore you could get the vegetables in it but the problem is is that you're also getting sugar excess sugar into their body every time so you can't always do that but I know that a lot of parents did that okay but um it wasn't a problem like it is today well I mean it's different today because today kids just eating sugar on top of sugar whenever they want you know because the parents are not being responsible enough to know what to do about it okay they don't know how to control their own so they certainly can't even help their kids but this is what really has got everybody off balance and um, it's affecting the medical society as well and uh, in such a way that because diabetes when you cause when you're when there's a um, when there's a disease crisis like diabetes okay happening to the, the pretty much the most of the population okay is where we're at today and the the cost of the disease is is phenomenal astronomical and 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 it's, it's crippling the medical profession so that's the reason why they're telling on each other now is because their problems are starting to come to light to where they have to do something about it so ergo the program I was watching so they did a program to do a study uh, an investigation on the sugar in our diets the sugar in our foods because it's not so much because you could, people was like, well, I'm not even eating that much sugar. I don't know why I'm pre-diabetic. I don't know why I'm having this issue. So, you know, this is what was going on. And so they did an investigation on it and they brought all the big companies together. And they claimed they brought, took out the fat when, when the FDA told them to take out the fat, you know, or whoever, I forgot, the Food and Drug Ministry, yeah, FDA. Um, so they did that you know and then they're supposed to and actually they said they didn't even have to show all of that but you know by law you know but they went along with it and they they said well we cut back on the fat and stuff out of the products and so um and then when the sugar issue when they found out well hey you know what it's not the fat it's the sugar so they did an investigation again on that and found out that that's this is how they got people to to um to get to the point where they can't do without certain foods you know so basically the food and food companies have basically caused people to get addicted to sugar hello y'all they got us addicted to sugar y'all okay i haven't used sugar sugar in years you know years decades uh i use a sweetener like sweet and low and I was telling you guys about that but even there's some people even out there saying that we shouldn't use that either you know none of that shit but but you know what I'm trying to do the lesser of the two evils okay um, sugar is bad but you need your food to taste good too so sugar is also something that that you should be able to use to enhance the flavor of food okay it's not supposed to be something that causes you to get addicted to your foods and that's what the um, food industries have done in order to get you in in order to compete with their competitors they have put hidden sugar into all the foods 
all the food, y'all. That's why everybody is overweight. And, and and we they can blame it on the individual person if they want to, but there's already studies to show that that's not true. People have been doing better with their, and they still can't get rid of it. And why? Because of what the sugar had, the damage of sugar in the foods have done. And they have, the, the manufacturers of our foods have been, and we're talking about processed food, y'all, because they can't, as far as I know, they can't put um, additive sugars into um, whole foods. Whole foods are foods like your fruits and vegetables that, you know, anything that you can, that doesn't have any kind of processing done to it, you know. And so basically, we're back at square one to where people, how people used to eat. And they're saying the only way to recover your, your, your health is to stop eating all processed foods. That would bankrupt our nation. You do know that, right? So they're not, they're not going to have that. <laughs> So, so when they when they brought all the big boys together, the big food corporations together, Campbell's, all the ones you could think of, you know, the big boys, and um, because they're the ones who have done done it, and, and and um, and they're trying to say that that's not true, you know, but they have lied to the public, they have lied to anybody who has asked them, and they're not in agreement with this, of course, because they will lose money. But you know what? I think it's so unfair that they're not getting sued. But they're at the point now because they're doing these studies on the sugars that they're going to, they're comparing this to the same situation as cigarettes when they found out about what the damage that cigarette smoking done to people. Cigarette addiction, nicotine addiction to cigarettes has done and how they, they, they sued those the companies that made the cigarettes and stuff because they knew that their that stuff was addicting but it was not being told to the public and the same way with the the food industries they are not telling how they are doing this how they're making their foods taste like they do so they're using hidden um i, I want to say um they're using hidden ingredients i can't think of the right word that i want but it, they're additives <clears throat> and they're not going to list all that stuff. So they're going to give you the basics of what's in there. But they're not going to give away the fact that they're putting stuff in these foods that are causing. And it's also, I believe, it's also contributing to the size of our children. If you notice, children nowadays are so much bigger than children were when, when, when just decades ago. You know, in our, in, in our, I guess I'm the... I'm the baby boom. I'm I'm from the baby boom gener boomer generation. So the kids from that generation, you look at those kids, and you look at the kids in the next generation, in the next one, like today. You know, my, like are your grandchildren or whatever. If you have grandchildren, look at them and see how big they are. I, you know, I know. I see. I have a t friend who has a ten-year-old daughter, and this girl looks at least sixteen, seventeen years old almost. And she can talk that way, but you can also, if I didn't know her personally, I would not know that that child was only 10 years old. Okay? So, um, I'm just saying, you know, there's a reason why our children, not just genetics, you know, um, yes, if your child is, it should be tall, if you are tall or if the dad is tall, those things are a factor, of course. But I'm just saying, it's surpassing that. It is surpassing that. Okay, and uh, and it's happening at a rapid rate, and that's why we have we're seeing so many of the children um, with great obesity issues. Okay, not just the people, the adults. It's not just a individual problem. This is a nationwide problem. Okay, and it's happening in other nations as well, but it's really taken off over in United States. So I just thought I'd share that with you. Um, just look up sugar investigation and uh, investigation on sugars in our foods, and you will be able to probably find the same one. I just stumbled upon it really because I'm I'll be checking through. Um, I like to watch um, the YouTube channel on TV because there's movies, there's different things, there's church, and so I like all of that, you know. And um, 
I, I'm a person, I'm inquisitive, I like to do research. So that's why I'm available to do that, you know, and to check out things. And I, and I definitely would love to share it with someone else, especially since I'm doing um, the lifelong food planning, so that you can understand that you need to take back control over this. And I'm asking the Lord, I'm going to be asking the Lord, and I will be praying before I get off of here, um, about um, how do we um, manage this information. Because some things are going to feel like defeating. You know, it's going to feel like it's a defeated situation. And when you think about it, you're like, well, geez, man, almost everything we eat now is processed, Right. Well, like I shared with you guys, I haven't I haven't drank regular milk in, gosh, man, over 50 years. You know, um, I, I can't even remember. You know, how when when was the last time I had regular milk? But I I, I didn't I could taste the fat in milk, and, and I always could, and I didn't like it, and so um, I didn't give it to my children when they were babies. I gave them, I was giving them low percent milk, you know, and my doc, their doctors were like, well, who told you to do that, you know, with your children? I said, I, t I decided to do that. I said, they don't need all that fat. And, and you know how babies are cute and fat and cuddly when they're little. One of my sons were, he was an extremely big baby. He, he was just like, he was my oldest son and he couldn't even, he was walking, he walked late because his legs were so short and so fat that, you know, at, at, at almost three years old, he was still, you know, being carried and things like that. So I had to wait for a growth spurt to hit him in order, or they said if it hadn't happened, you know, they were going to have to like break his legs or something, you know, and put him in cast to help him to grow taller because his, the weight of his body was disproportionate to the length of his legs it was just you know and thank god he you know he didn't have to go through all that he hit a growth spurt and and that took care of that and he balanced out but he had to he went through a fatty stage you know and even though i was i was on my uh, excellent cook both of his, his dad and me were both cooks in the military so um i was the you know the one who was disciplinary uh with the foods and things like that and I made sure my kids had balanced meals and I, I you know, and they, they had treats, you know, just like normal people have. I would never tell somebody you, you can't have, your kids can't have, um, you know, treats, things that they think taste good, you know, or things that you know that taste good, I should say, because you should stay in control over what is happening to your child until that child is out on their own, because as long as they're living under your roof, you are responsible for everything that happens to that child. You are responsible for the environment that you are raising that child up in, and we're not, we don't have parents hardly like that today. You know, sad to say, you know, there's a small number of responsible parents and I'm not putting you down. I'm just saying you have you have not been taught that way. And because you weren't taught that way, you're not able to raise your ch children up being in full control over what's happening to them. You know, the decisions that they should not be making. There's decisions children are making today that they should not be making. It should be parents. And um, so my children. You know, I'm the meal. I prepare the meals. I take care of the home, the environment, what's going on there. And that's what needs to happen. And if you don't, if you're not doing that, then you're, don't be surprised that your child is going into the refrigerator every time. I was even ready to put a lock on my refrigerator because my oldest son was always wanting more. He always wanted more. And I know that I was giving him enough food to eat. But he always wanted more. He had a big appetite. He's still like that today. And so he um, is now dealing with diabetes. And the younger son is not. So, And they're only like 10 months, 25 days apart in age. Okay? So tell me what's wrong with this picture. Okay? And um, they both can have a, a weight problem for their size or height and age. Um, but one has diabetes and one doesn't. And... It has to do with 
how you know you're eating and how you know and I know I trained them right but he used to always you know want more to the point where his dad was just like let him have seconds let him have you know thirds and I'm mean, you know let him have it and but you you gotta keep but then when I had to start buying chubby size clothes for him then he got the message you know my husband got the message that you can't let children just have everything that they think they want you can't do that you are the parents and you have to do smarter so you can do better by them okay and then when they get old enough you know and they're on their own they can do their own thing you know they have to make that decision now you know but if you start them out right then you did the best thing you could do for them you created the best environment for them to learn and to grow and to nurture them and to help them have a good start in life to the best of your ability but if you yourself don't care enough to find out you know and do better then woe is you and woe is your children you know so I'm sharing this with you and I added those you know true to life story thing um, to help you get a better picture of what I'm talking about and it's never too late you know to turn things around but it's harder it is much harder you know so it, it do your children a favor and get it together now while they're still young if you have young children if you have grandchildren and you're helping pretty much most of the time raise those grandchildren don't be giving them a bunch of junk because um your your grandma or your grandpa and you can spoil them spoiling them you're gonna kill them if you don't give them snacks that are healthy you know so like um with my grandchildren i gave them sugar-free stuff sugar-free jello sugar-free this sugar-free that anything that that was not, i never gave them a bunch of junk to eat you know but they had a opportunity to have it you know and they have opportunities to eat desserts and and things like that with their meals that's normal that's a normal meal plan okay and there's nothing wrong with that but the problem is is that we didn't know that these food companies were doing that to us you know and here we are you know bankrolling their lifestyle and their companies and corporations and they're killing us with their products okay so basically our only real uh, true alternative is because they took a family that was in trouble with it okay and uh which is pretty much four 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 five six well pretty much eight families out of ten are in trouble with this okay so they could have picked anybody's family and had the same you know found the same type of condition with the family and the children with the father and mother and the children and so they took a family and they asked them if they would go along with this and um, do this study with them and they agreed and um, they ended up you know following nothing but they had to put them on nothing but whole foods okay so that meant they could not use any they had to they supplied the food to the family that they wanted them to use to change up to right and, the only, and so basically what we learned from when you see the video on YouTube is that you basically are going to have to go back to all whole foods in order to reverse the curse of the sugar, the sugar additives and, and uh, chemicals, the sugary chemicals that uh, com food companies have put into foods that didn't even need it. You know what I'm saying? They put this stuff in there to get you to buy it and get you hooked on it so that you can help them make the millions and billions of dollars that they do and are at today I, I said you know this is such a, and this is one of the reasons why I believe that God had me bring this information forth because um, I was bothered by the fact that I have to pay somebody to help me to eat right or to eat better you know and then if you don't have the money to pay you know to buy these better foods and things like that and then turns out that they got sugar additives in them as well um so we can't get away from it unless we can't stop the sugar madness y'all unless we go back to whole foods that's what they're saying and um and that's the only way they're going to be able to reverse the curse of diabetes on our nation 
population. It's basically in the health crisis that has happened in the United States, okay, and then, as well as in other nations. Uh, so if they're eating like United States and have companies like ours do, you know, then they're suffering the same problems with their population and their health crisis in their nations, whoever they are. But we definitely have it in ours. Okay, so that's what they're saying. Now, if you can do that and you want to go back to your Whole Foods, uh, then that's fine, you know. Um, but I'm telling you, you're going to have some work to do. And you're going to find, I, I just, I read, um, I didn't even watch it, but I, I read one YouTube um, video said that the um, getting off of sugar is is going to be like getting off of the drug opioids and I'm like that is crazy that is sick you know that it's like being addicted to opioids is what the lady was saying and I'm like oh my god so because it's an addiction because it was put into your your system unawares and now your body is like craving this your body doesn't know any better, you know, it doesn't, you know what I'm saying, as far as it didn't know, so it, it, it took in and it did what it did with it, and that's, that's why we're in the health conditions that we are today, and it will take a, a, a lot of people, you know, so a lot of time, really, to try and turn that around, and it will be difficult, but I'm not saying it's not impossible, so if you want to do that, and you want to start it and you add it to your food plan you can do you can do um, make things better for yourself by adding more whole foods um, on the days when you're doing your meal planning so um, I'm suggesting to you that you should um, if you want to try to cut back the sugars in your foods then that's one way to do it okay um, you won't be able to do it with the, the foods per se that I used on those the ones that the samples that are the examples that I have shown you um, in the video here um, because I'm using canned soups you know and uh, things of that nature and all that has sugar additives in it and, uh, and just start reading your labels like I told you that will help you some but there's no way we can detect by the label that the ingredients things that they have added in there, the sugar additives that we don't even know the names of, and some of the names we can't even produce it, uh, uh, we can't even pronounce it because of uh, it's a chemical, okay? And so, um, and if they if they not adding it to the product, you know, after they have, you know, after the product is in their hands, okay, then they are adding it somehow into the ground, into the uh, earth you know the the way the the foods were uh, created okay so um you know and i'm talking about your natural foods as well because if they did it with um the can and package and processed foods okay then what's to stop them from finding a way to put it into our whole foods that are being grown our fruits and vegetables what's to stop them from putting that additive out there Oh, the, the, oh, somebody already thought of it, y'all. If I just thought of it, somebody's already doing it. So I'm just sharing with you that this is what we're dealing with in our nation. And this is all because of greed, you know. The rich get richer and the poor get poorer and sicker and die, okay. So, and because of what's going on. And it's because of the way we run our lives. And, and if these people were Christians, true Christians, uh, then they would be thinking twice about what they're doing. You know what I'm saying? They would find better ways to do what, you know, to make the products healthier for people that they're giving, that, that we're giving our money to. You know, shame on them. Really, shame on them. And, and we're, we're the ones who are having to pay for it. You know, so don't beat yourself up too badly you know about your health conditions because I mean, I'm not saying don't don't care I'm saying you need to care but you need to take back control over it and this is like you know a step that you can do to help yourself do better you know to overcome 
you know, some of the things that you have no control over. You don't have any control over. I mean, we can march, we can protest, we can, um, you know, we can write letters, we can do whatever is available, excuse me, to us. And um, we could probably bring them, get, um, um, I'm sorry, I can't think of the name of them, but we probably could get it to where they can be brought up on charges for the things that, but we have to have the proof. We have to have the um, the shows and the people that do the investigations on, on our products, our foods and services and things of that nature in order to make changes, in order to make enough fuss about it, you know, to make changes as to what's been happening in our world. So, because I wonder, you know, it, what will they do? You know, what, how bad, how's it going to affect us? Um, with the, when the medical condition, when the medical profession is in such a crisis because of the disease, the cost of disease has gotten so high that they can't survive. The medical profession can't survive, can't, you know, do what it's supposed to be able to do. What are they going to do? I'll tell you what they're probably going to do. They're going to let people die. They're going to let people die. And actually, they're going to help people to die. And I, I shared this. I shared it with my sons. I shared it with anybody that the conversation comes up. I'm a veteran. And I have to be very picky with um, the VA. And my health care is with them. And I have to tell them what I, what's wrong with me and what's going on with me and what I will do and what I will not do. Be, and, I, and I tell them what they will, will and will not do to me, you know, as far as health care and medications and things of that nature. Because I believe that they help people die, you know. I, I, I don't, they, the, as the VA, you would think the government, okay, VA is government, okay. You would think that they would have the top of the line um, care for his people, you know, but they don't when it comes to, um, you know, your, um, how you say it, your everyday health care system, you know, your visits to the doctors, your medications if you need them, whatever, whatever, but basically they give them the old stuff. You, you don't, and when I, like, the reason why I know is because I, I, my health care, they're my health care, and I have went to my doctors with things that I've seen, new products that have come out, and they, they always like, well, we can't get that, you know, or we can't, I don't know if we can get that for you, and stuff like that, so I, I'm, I'm, I have to end up going outside of them to get something better, and have to come out of my pocket and pay for it, when they're supposed to pay for it, because of my service, okay, and so, this is what I'm trying to tell you, and if you depend totally on, if I depend totally on them, I might be in the bed right now, you know, laid up and sick and ready to check up out of here if I listen to everything the VA doctors tell me. I can't. As nice as some of them might be, you know, I do have a, a couple favorite doctors, but for the most part, I don't let none of them tell me, you know. And I question them and I check stuff out. And I've been told I need to have this surgery done and, and blah, 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 right? And I said no, because I felt like God told me no, you know, and, and, and I'm not going to listen to just what they say. I'm going to listen to what God tells me, and I thank God I'm saved. I thank God I'm a Christian, and I, I can depend on God to guide me, you know, and what to do and what not to do. And when it's time for me to go home and be with Jesus, then it's time for me to go home and be with Jesus. But in the meantime, you're not going to, another system, as much as I can, it can, I can help it, they're not going to help me get sicker and, and make things worse for me while I'm here. So we need to wake up, y'all. We need to wake up and stop looking at everybody else to take care of us. It doesn't work that way. And it's never supposed to work that way. But... People, our government, you know, people in position has made us dependent upon them, you know, through our health care, through our, you know, life insurance and all kinds of stuff. These, these commercials, uh, don't get me started. Please don't get me started on that. So um, I just, any of you 
that are seniors or older than 50 or whatever, okay, you should check out what they, what, how they try to get us to buy products from them just because we're getting older, okay? Do you really need that? You know, you shouldn't be thinking that they know what they're talking about. You better find out whether or not, you know, what they're saying is something that you really need. And, um, and I, I'm, I'm talking about Medicare, all that stuff. It's a racket. It's a big racket. And I know you might be thinking, well, what am I supposed to do? I have to get my health care from somewhere. Yeah, but you need to stay in control over it. You choose what not to get and what not. What? Look it up. You have, don't, don't be no older person who don't want to use the computer system. Use the technology that's being that's coming forth, that's being made available to us, you have to find a way to be able to find out information. And if you cut yourself off from that, then you're depending on everybody else and, and you're going to be dead before you know it, you know. And you're going to be in trouble with something before you know it because you're so dependent on people to, to honestly take help you take care of yourself. And really, you're not taking care of yourself. You're, you, you've given that authority over to someone else. So this is why my, my um, lifelong food planning is one. It's to give you back the control and, and tell you how you can get it back. And then, um, you know, just be a part of the community as being smarter about stuff. You know, check in the stuff and hang out with people who, who think better, who think different than what everybody's telling you to think. You know, everything on the news ain't right. Everything that you hear out there is not right. You better check it out, okay? And as long as you have the ability to do so. And if you don't, if you feel like you don't have to find somebody that you know that will help you, okay? That cares about this stuff, okay? And then, um... And then work with them and, and go from there, you know, and that way you can make better decisions about your life and your livelihood. Because that's what we're talking about when we're talking about lifelong food planning here. Okay, so on the um, sheets before we end here, because this is an hour video, um, and mostly is just me talking and telling you about what's going on and bringing you an update and encouraging you to try to set you up a plan. From, from what I'm showing you with my, these are my actual meal plans and some days you'll see there may not be nothing there and I might have wrote a note there as to the reason why because some days I might fast or something and I mean a real fast as far as like all I did was liquids that day you know it just depends on what was happening with me but I have a history of, of religious fasting and things of that nature as well as well as health fasting now the, as I was saying um, I think I mentioned it um, there's some on the flip side of those um, meal plans that I that I that you see on the video um, on some of the back of them I would write notes on it if I was trying out a new product or if I was writing down information and I was trying to figure out um, the, the calories and if, you know if it wasn't straightforward when I looked on the box or the can or whatever it was um, but that's what you should be looking at read your labels so you know what you're eating and know what the calorie amount is and stuff and so don't just write down what the servings is if you eating the whole can how many servings is in that can it might be 3.5 servings in that can instead of looking at the can as one serving of, of vegetables no read the label it's easy it's not that hard and if you have difficulties with reading um, please get some help please get some help to um, improve in that area because I can't even imagine someone who cannot read today. I know we had a lot of our um, past uh, generations who had suffered really a lot with not being able to read. And I know there's people today who may have that issue. But I'm telling you, there's too much help available, free help available to overcome illiteracy. Okay? So um, I just encourage you to let people help you with stuff like that so that you can take control because if you don't let people help you with certain things so that you can learn more then you can't be you can't have more control over your life you're losing control okay 
And so when you look at the meal plans that I have used, um, like I said, I just made this up for me based on things that I like to eat and, you know, things that I know that are uh, less calories and, and um, good for me and, and things of that nature and things that I like. And so you're going to see eggs on there, for instance. I'm a brown egg eating person, okay? It's nothing to find three dozen of eggs, brown eggs, omega-3 eggs and stuff like that in my refrigerator because I'm going to probably eat eggs every day. And they told us, you know, you shouldn't because of the cholesterol, blah, 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 blah. Well, I'm eating the best eggs I believe that's available to us. Okay, whether it's cage free or you know whatever, um, I try to buy the best um, things that like margarines and things like that. I showed you guys. If you go back and look at the videos. I showed you some of the products that I use, but um, I push a lot of omega threes in the foods that I get, pick, and uh, you know things of that nature. And so, and then I love fruits. I love vegetables. You know. Um, but I also know that you're going to have to make your intermittent fasting foods. And these, these um, meals that you see on there, those are intermittent fasting. That's, that's the kind of fasting we do. On the, our plans, on our lifelong plans, what we do, we eat a fasting meal. So we're, we're not doing without food. We're not doing that. Okay, um, I'm not, that's not what our plan is about. Okay, our plan is intermittent fasting means we eat lower calorie foods or a lower amount of calories, okay, on the days when we're doing our uh, food planning. Okay, so if I'm going to, um, um, if you notice that I probably had one day off, most of the time I had Sunday off or Monday off. Um, where I ate regular meals. That means when I say regular or day off, if you see that on the on the on the meal planning that I, I the samples that I showed you there that I used, that means I ate whatever I wanted to eat. Look at the type of food. It might it may not have anything wrote down there because on my day off, you know, after a while, and I thought about, it, I said I don't really have to write it down, but I did. I wrote down sometimes, and I think you should write it down, especially when you're first trying first trying this out you know you don't really need to keep track of it once you get once you get the hang of what you're doing and you understand oh okay this is what I'm doing I'm eating lighter on these other days you're still eating three meals a day and a snack you know is what you will see on there but then on your day your regular day off means that I eat whatever I want to if I want Popeye's chicken uh, if I want um, you know if I want to go out or if I want to barbecue, you know, um, then you could plan these things, you know, and and just put it into your your plan, you know, as your day off. And if you need more than one day off, if you go on vacation, then I'm on vacation for um, three days, so I'm not meal planning. So you eat whatever you want on those days, okay? But then on your other four days that you say that you were on vacation for three days, on your four days, you're meal planning. And when we say meal planning, that's your intermittent fasting, okay? That's what meal planning is. Intermittent fasting of foods, be, uh, like for women, I, I put mine at anywhere from 1,000 calories to 1,500 on my meal planning days, okay? And then on my days off, I'm eating way past that, you know, because I'm not meal planning, okay? So that's what's causing you to lose the weight. And when you eat like that and you learn to eat like that, you're meal planning, okay? And it's lifelong and it's easy, it's effortless, you know. But you got to get your little system going and then figure out, take out, you know, work out your kinks and stuff, problems that popped up, you know, and, and what to do when I get sick. If you, you know, because you're going to get sick, life happens to everybody. And how, how am I supposed to eat during that time? you know and stuff use your intermittent fasting is what I would do if I is what I would tell you you eat your lighter calorie days if you get sick okay 
And then if you're like me, I just eat a regular, I eat regular when I get sick because I know sick be, when I feel sick, boom, having what I want to eat, what I like to eat, I'm, I'm just going to eat that, you know, until I, until I feel better. Because while you're sick, you don't really have enough strength to um, be meal planning and, and, and doing all that. Now, if you do, more power to you. But if you don't, don't beat yourself up over it, okay? You can always get back to it once you're feeling better. But I'm telling you, it, it's probably in your best interest to just meal plan during the days while you're sick, you know. So that way um, you're not adding to your problems or whatever. But if you're like me, you know, you know yourself, you know, but you're going to learn yourself also from doing this. And that's what's so good about the um, lifelong uh, meal planning with intermittent fasting. And our intermittent fasting is with eating food, okay? Um, there are calorie range of foods. And, and yeah, you should... You got, you got to learn how to count calories a little bit, you know, so you can get an idea of what it looks like to stay in that range. And like I said, after a while, it's going to be like second nature to you. You're going to know what to eat on your meal planning days. You're not going to have to keep writing this down, but you should because it's going to teach you how to do this. And all this is free, y'all. You just buy your foods that you normally buy. Now, if you're buying crazy stuff, you know, that you know you should need to get rid of, you know, you shouldn't be, just know you, sh you can't eat it every day. Just know you cannot eat it, you know, three and four times out of the week. You can't do it and expect to have weight loss. You know, it's not going to, and it's not going to be healthy for you. So, you're in charge, okay, and you get to decide, how many days do I want to eat regular, whatever I want, you know. And you plan that however you want to do it. And how how much weight do you want to lose? You know? And what are you what are your plans when you reach the, the amount of weight that you want to lose? I think people should do this lifelong. That's why I called it lifelong meal planning. Because if you do it lifelong, you will always be losing a couple pounds a week and, and it will keep you healthy. Okay? And you won't have to worry, you know, about continuously being overweight. If you're continuously losing a couple of pounds every week, you can't continuously remain overweight, okay? So, let's talk more about this, okay? Thanks for listening this week. And um, I don't know when I'll be back again, but I, I, I you know, for this, because you need time to work on this. I'm not going to be coming on here all the time with this. I will come when I think that I need to touch out, reach out to you. And I would like for you guys to tell me how you're doing after you see these. And after you try it, put your own food in it. These are not foods. Uh, if you like the same foods I like, then go for it. You know, but if you don't, find foods that, that will work for you. Okay, that's that's all it's there for. It's just so you can see. And see that I lost 18 pounds from that. Okay, and so um, what can you get from it? Okay, um, so I, I'm going to end in prayer because I really want to pray for you. And I really want to pray, uh, you know, because I share with you guys about what our nation has done to us to make us sick through sugar, you know, hidden sugars in food. Let's not forget that, you guys, what I share with y'all and, and that you need to look into things. Okay, okay, so don't just, you know. If you feel led, there's a reason why you feel led to check something out. And so, hang around people who care about this stuff, you know, and talk to people who care about this stuff, okay, so that you can get smarter, all right? All right, Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank and praise you, Lord God, for this time uh, um, to share with the people about lifelong food planning with weekly weight loss, Lord God, and helping them to take back control over their lives through their food through their meal planning for the rest of their life Lord God and not having to pay um, the food industries and the food clubs and and all these food programs Lord God billions and billions of dollars out of our pockets Lord 
and we're not even any better for it. So, God, I pray in Jesus' name, Lord God, that you would overturn what the, the big food companies are doing to the people, Lord God, through our food. You know, and even through our water, Lord, um, there's additives that have been put in our waters. And sometimes we don't even think about it anymore because we just drink bottled water and think we're safe. We're not safe. You know, Lord God, what they're doing out there. Only you are the one who knows everything and sees everything, Lord God. So we pray. Lord God, that you will reveal to us um, how to turn our lives over to you, number one, through Christ Jesus our Lord, and become Christians, Lord, so that we have a, a, a open line, an open, open um, forum with you, an uh, open relationship with you about our lives and what we're doing and how we can do it better, Lord God, and how we can be protected by you. Because our only protection comes from you, Lord God. We can't protect ourselves from what man does. We only have a limited way to protect ourselves from what mankind can do to us. And so, Lord, we are asking in Jesus' name, Lord God, that you will reveal what the, what the companies, these large companies have been doing to the people, to the populace, Lord God. And we cry out to you, Lord God, save us from the works of their hands, from the evil works of money, Lord God, that's moving and, and driving people to do these vicious and wicked things to people and causing disease to come upon people that they should not even have. And so, Lord, we thank you right now as you begin to cure, as you begin to heal, as you begin to raise up our children, Lord God, to see these things that are going on and to come forth and be ones who can bring cures, Lord God, from, from um, the things that have ailed us, Lord God, as you give them the ability to do so, Lord. But we know that you are the great physician. We know that you are the great provider of every good thing, Lord God. And so we just thank you right now and we ask you. Lord God to just point us in the right direction help us oh God to come together Lord God and to come unto you to receive the power and the wealth of knowledge that we need the wisdom that we need to walk through this life Lord God with better health and healing and, and more than that Lord but if we don't have our health Lord, if we're not healed, if we're not delivered, spirit, soul, and body, if we're not in your hands, then we are of uh, most men, worse, most miserable. And, and we can't do a thing about it, Lord God, without your help. So God, we give you praise for that. But we do have a part to play. So you've given us the ability to think and to do and to go forth, Lord God, and to work together and to create and to come up with better ways of doing it. We're not dumb. Lord, help us to use the intelligence that you have given us, Lord God. Nobody is smarter than the next person. You might, somebody might be smarter than you, but you're not, you're not dumb because somebody else is smarter than us, Lord. So help us, Lord Jesus, to realize this about ourselves because we give more credit to other people than we do to ourselves. Help us to stop that right now because in Jesus' name, you have given us the ability to think, to have intelligence, and to be able to do things for ourselves, Lord God. Hallelujah. And the only help that we need is the meteor, the one and only true meteor, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And so, Father, I pray for salvation to come to people that may listen to these videos. I pray that they will turn their lives over to you, come seeking after you, Lord God, so that they can understand where I'm coming from, so they can understand that I, I, I am not just anybody on here. I am a child of God, a child of the King, a child of the Most High God, the child that has been called of God to share the wealth of knowledge that you have and that we have in you, Lord God, through Christ Jesus our Lord. This is why we need to be saved. It ain't just to get to heaven. It's about the life we live in right now. Are you going to continue to live it without the Lord Jesus Christ or will you be saved? So, Father, I pray in Jesus' name that people will, through the, the knowledge and the things that you are making available, the things that you are exposing, Lord, that they will come to the saving knowledge of the truth in Christ Jesus. That you want us saved now while we're still walking this earth. It's still your earth, Lord God. Help us to remember that. You're still in control. So, Father, we thank you for this time. And we thank you for this information in this video. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Have a great day.